Well, I finally picked up this unidentified motor. I know it came out of a dryer, and I thought afterwards, ah, oh, might as well make a video how to identify a motor which may have to have an, uh, which will have a start and, and run winding and maybe capacitor, yay or nay. So, smashed the impeller off already, and then I thought, ah, oh, let's make a video. So, I managed to get the collar off, which was quite a bit of a mission. Had a grub screw, it was a bit rusty. But uh, a bit of CRC and uh, stuff all got it off eventually. So uh, yeah, well let's go ahead and uh, I'll see how we get this thing to work. Yes, yes or no, yes. So I've got a bundle of wires here. Um, the way I look at it, uh, these wires going inside. Red, blue, yellow, trace, and a red one. I think these are going to the motor windings, and then there's a couple of here, brown white and then uh, blue one that is uh, probably going to the switch which is uh, behind this cover here so we're gonna have a look into that okay I've cleaned up the ends of the leads um, I use a multimeter of course uh, it pays still to check your test leads especially when you use extendable alligator clips on there um, just a short mile briefly to check uh, that the leads are actually working because um, now the leads themselves is uh, 1.48 ohms, that's fine. Uh, it's one of this other Crepo Chinesium leads here, as Shango says. It was uh, 5 kilo ohms, so it gives you wrong uh, identifications on the leads. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna check from red to red, see if we get any continuity on there. And the other red wires here, and I'll see what the meter tells us. 1.64, 1.5, that's quite low reading there. Uh, go to red to black with yellow, that's open. We're talking DC readings here, so red to red is obviously one set. Now I'm going to do go from uh, black with yellow trace and black with red trace and see what reading that gives us. Now well, it may go to the switch, who knows. Um, investigate a little bit more to come up with some readings. Well, this motor has an internal switch, and somehow the tests I did, the measurements don't make much sense to me. Uh, basically, from uh, what I think is a motor running red to blue, and the other red to blue is about 14 ohms. No readings between any of the other leads, so I have to resort to opening this motor up. Uh, before you open up a motor anyway, it's uh, good practice to mark the end shells, uh, a felt marker, or use a center point to put some uh, markings on it, so you get things back together the way they were before. And uh, I'm just going to put the camera down and I'm going to take this lid apart and have a look inside, see how this thing is uh, assembled. Stand by. Okay, I put this thing on the ground so it avoids me dropping it. I've managed to pose the iron shell off. Hopefully the whole thing will pull out. All these stupid bloody switches in here. So they make life a bit hard. Uh, yeah, these wires here all twisted. Uh, it's going to be a pain. This time, let's hang on, have a look at this bloody thing first. Linings look all right, they're not cooked or so. Let's see if we get some better access to the device. Typical, these motors are a pain in the butt the way they make them. Um, this looks like an, uh, it's not a capacitor start motor, it's got a uh, little relay in here, there's a current relay, current sensing that pulls in on the inrush current and drops out. So that makes sense that the two reds are connected, and then a yellow, red to red, and red to yellow, and yellow one will go to the start winding. Let's see if we can pick up these colors. And the other one goes to the wind winding. The only thing, having a closer look here, that these windings, the other windings look a little bit darker, so let's hope they're still alright. Let's step this apart a bit more. Well, fiddling around today with these motor, I just try to get this lined up. I made a bit of a bobo. I got uh, this one, the DC washing machine motor driving this motor, the AC motor, and uh, I had a side coupling. And I should have connected this motor onto the variac, which I forgot. I plugged it in full mains, so it overshot the speed on the induction motor, which destroyed the uh, centrifugal switch. Should have documented it. it was quite a good fire show, but. But I didn't expect this thing to go wrong and it's the switch just destroyed. So I'm going to abandon all these wires. And uh, at the moment I'll just uh, put some sleeves on here. So I get the bindings from the 
calls, they're luckily not damaged outside. So uh, brown and blue is the running call, and uh, black and red is the starting call, which has a higher resistance. Well, to get one of those motors going, I'll show you in the following diagram. Um, this was the so called induction motor. I'll clear it up a bit. These are my little licorices. Um, as you can see, that particular motor has two windings. It has a one winding, a start winding, which had a centrifugal switch, uh, which I destroyed by accident. So that switch is a temporary or bridge. Uh, close the contact briefly to get the motor to spin. Run winding stays on all the time, that remains energized. Start winding is only energized for a uh, very short period because it will burn out very quickly. Change the rotation, you can swap uh, terminal 1 and terminal 2, put these two wires the other way around. The motor will either go clockwise or anti clockwise. If you have any um, single phase motor, whether it's capacitor start or split phase or whatever, they normally have uh, four wires coming out of the motor as you can see in the in the part of the video, two grey ones and a brown and a uh, blue one in this particular motor uh, the run winding had a DC value of 14 ohms and the start winding had a DC value of about uh, 20 ohms around uh, thereabouts so uh, yeah that's the way uh, I connected the top in this particular uh, motor generator setup. The DC motor was the prime mover to drive the AC motor over speed and create a bit of a backflow into the system. Not super efficient because the DC motor was drawing power from the mains from another receptacle. So yeah. Readings from the meter, I'll see if we can get the volts uh, readings on here. Six ampere. That doesn't mean the show's power factor, but it doesn't matter. Let's get a pulse rate. Pulse rate is four point three. Red is active goes into the brown wire, goes into the motor. Blue wire comes out, that's for the green winding, comes out of uh, the end this terminal, goes back to the black return path. Then the blue wire is jumped to one of the grey ones, that's for the start winding. And the other grey one is here, jumped to the orange one, which I got looped up to here. And now normally for starting, it's not perfectly set up. Um, that will go on here, and I'll flip that off, I'll try to get it on camera. I'll be flipping that orange wire off quickly and you'll see what happens for starting. I'll do one more quick start to visualize. Uh, is it running? Yeah, it is. Watch the ammeter shooting off the scale. That's pretty good. Yeah, yes. 